Introduction to Buffer Overflows. So in this video, I'm actually going to show you how to do a basic buffer overflow attack. Buffer overflows occur when a program puts more data into a buffer than it can hold. And so some people might be asking, what is a buffer? Well, a buffer is just a temporary storage area that the program uses to store its data. It's basically a placeholder inside of your random access memory. So we refer to that as a stack. It's this reserved area of memory, and that's where the programs are going to be saved with the return addresses for when a call instruction is, re is received by the program. This is usually organized in a Lilo structure, which allows us to have the first thing being placed into the stack being the last thing that comes out of the stack. The attacker can actually use this to their advantage by placing too much information on the stack, and that will allow us to change the value of the return pointer to carry out our attack or our exploit code. The attacker's code is placed into the buffer, and this code can be used to run different commands or even execute a series of instructions. So in this video, I'm actually going to show you how to do a basic buffer overflow attack. And where we're going to do that is we're going to use Over the Wire. Overthewire.org is a website that has numerous war games there that you can use in their live environment. You connect to them through SSH and you can attempt various challenges. In our example, the Narnia challenges are binary exploitation challenges. They'll start with simple buffer overflows and they get harder as you go through them. If you're not really familiar in this area, some good resources is to look at the Shell Coders Handbook. Uh, Hacking the Art of Exploitation, or even the Hacker's Playbook 2 has a very small section on how to do this, at least for the th first three challenges in the Narnia series. And again, as you play with this, uh, you're going to get better at this. It is going to require some ability to read other people's code and understand how memory is accessed so that you'll be able to overwrite that memory and cause it to do that buffer overflow to do our exploit. So here we go. So we're going to begin by opening our Kali Linux machine and opening our terminal. From there, we're going to SSH into the server using our username narnia0 at narnia.labs.overthewire.org and our password of narnia0. Once we connect, we're going to CD into the narnia directory. Once we've done that, we need to look at the actual program that we're trying to exploit. In our case, narnia0.c. To do that, we are going to end up doing cat cat narnia0.c and the program's contents will get shown to our screen. So in this point we can see the actual code itself. You can see it's a C program with our standard IO headers and our standard IO libraries. Notice the long value there. 0 times 41414141 and our char, our character, our buffer is 20 characters. So if we put something over 20 characters, we should be able to do a buffer overflow in this case because it will be greater than what it's expecting. Notice in the program that the value equals dead beef, then it will give us a shell, bin slash sh. So what we're trying to do is do an overflow and then write into memory the hexadecimal value of dead beef. So here we're going to execute the program and we're going to put in an input. In this case, I'm going to put a bunch of A's. I'm counting carefully to put 20 A's and 4 B's. What happened is I overflowed the buffer with the A's, and so the value got overridden from 41414141 to 42424242, which was the hex representation of those B's. So at this point, I'm going to write a short Python script that will put 20 A's followed by the hexadecimal characters that I want, in this case, dead beef. Now I have to put it in a little bit backwards, and that's because of the fact that this machine is using uh, first in, first out, or uh, last in, first out architecture based on this machine. So in this case, I'm going to use the slash EF slash EE slash AD slash DE, and then I'm going to pipe that output into the narnia.c program, narnia0.c program. Notice my value has been overwritten with dead beef, just like we wanted. Now notice when I run this Python script, my value does change, but nothing else happens. I'm just returned to the shell, and that's because I executed the shell. Now what I want to do is have it so that when I execute the shell, it does something for me. In this case, I want it to show me what the password is for this stage, which allows me to go into stage two. The way I'll do that is by using an echo command. And so in this case, I'll use the same Python script I used, then put a semicolon, echo cat slash 
etc slash narnia pass slash narnia one which gives me the code to go into the next level which would be narnia two's level and then i do the pipe and run the program of narnia slash narnia zero as you can see my buffer gets overwritten dead beef is written to the value which then goes to execute the shell in this case executing my command the cat of the password for narnia one and I get the answer to the riddle, which was E-F-E-I-E-I-E-D-A-E. -E -E -E. If I go now to over the wire and use Narnia1 as my username, and I use that as my password, E-F-E-I-D-I-E-D-A-E, -E -E, I can then go into challenge number two. And that's just a very simple example of how a buffer overflow works. In this case, we overrode a 20-character memory allocation, pushing in those last four characters, whichever we put in there, into the memory, in this case, matching up to cause an overrun to run our bin slash sh or our shell.